After last night's awesome world premiere of the new Evil Dead, I wanted to share some of the fun, so here's the full 30-minute Q&A session that followed the film, featuring director Fede Alvarez, who says he's already writing Evil Dead 2, and producer Bruce Campbell explains why he did not make a cameo in this film. There are several plot spoilers which I've marked with these flashing warnings. So, how was your first uh, feature film world premiere experience? Well, that's awesome. I, 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 was, uh, I said a lot of people, like, one part of me, I think it's a comedy the movie, and for other people, they're going to see a horror movie. And I enjoyed that everybody was enjoyed it just like I did. So. Oh, man. I mean, did y'all love it? Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't know. 
I don't really care about that. I don't know. Yeah. It's good to point it out, but I haven't noticed. <laughs> Honestly. No idea. You're saying you were unaware you were breaking a rule. I, you know, I don't, I don't really, you know, you should, you should, I mean, there's so many things you, I don't know, they can block you and force you not to do something, so you kind of, you know, you, you don't have to care about that. It's important if the scene works or not. Absolutely. Any questions up in the balcony area up there? Yes, right there. My question is for, uh, for Rob and Bruce. Do you feel like if you had had the resources 30 years ago, is this the movie that sort of was in your head that you wanted to make? Or, or how is it different than sort of what you would have made if you had the resources that you have now? Uh, we're pleased that Fetty had what he needed now. <laughs> we were a little embarrassed seeing the green garden hose shooting shit out. <laughs> Are we going to go back like George Lucas and fix it? No. <laughs> you can say there's a certain charm in knowing how the effects were done. We kind of prefer it that you don't know how they're done, which is what you saw tonight. Right? You're good. You're good, right? Oh, you're good. Okay. Yeah. How's your face? How's your face? Okay. A little makeup. A little extra makeup. Good. Very good. Ah. No, there's somebody, they, you know, they said, oh, don't you miss the charm of the first one? The charm of having no money. The charm of charm of Rob and I making $35 a week in expenses, which we never collected because we didn't have the money. We went to buy gum one day at 7-Eleven. Nobody had any money to buy gum. Well, I guess we were going to buy how many gum today. <laughs> Let's go throw something in Bruce's face. We spent it on dog food. That's what we spent it on to throw in my face. Thanks for bringing up that happy memory. <laughs> I can't add anything to that. <laughs> uh, next question. We saw how they stopped paying you. <laughs> That's a stupid question. <laughs> right over there. Oh, we just, we, we thought that, that uh, you know, we need a relevant reason to love these guys and, and you know, his friends in a cabin that is creepy in the middle of nowhere. We didn't want to fall for the, you know, just, you know, let's go and have a beer and let's go and party. And uh, we didn't want to do that. We thought we needed to give a better reason why they go to the cabin, why they're going to lock them, them, themselves up in a place that is creepy. I mean, it's because it's a place they used to go and it's been abandoned, but it used to be their house. I think it, it gave a good reason to kind of start in a place that wasn't straightforward or horror. We wanted to have like a, the first half like completely realistic and like more straightforward drama, but yeah, I mean, it's, you, the audience knows that something is happening and you know better than the characters in a way. That, that's what I love about this kind of movie, and particularly this one, is that the audience knows way more than what the characters do. Right? So it's kind of, that's what's kind of the idea, to have a, two movies in one. The idea was to have a real drama and then they walk into an evil dead movie. It's like the big chill with Carnage and Mayhem. <laughs> Way up there. Yeah, hey, I've had the honor of working with the juries before, by the way, and uh, basically you guys were apparently doing this over in New Zealand. What tenure of time did you guys do it and began to finish? And uh, what was the working title? Because I would have loved to have worked with you guys. I uh, know you were actually over there while I was in Australia. <laughs> I don't know what was the origin title, but uh, we, we started and we got a green light back in December 2011, right? Yeah, and then we, we cast the movie and we went to New, to New Zealand uh, around January the next year, 2012, and we started shooting during the whole year. I mean, we, we started shooting in April and, and we were there all, all year between the shooting and the cutting and all that, so we kind of wrapped production on Yeah, uh, your plans to yeah we actually, uh, this is the yeah. official announcement, we, we already, uh, we, we already start uh, writing Evil Dead 2, we wrote it. Woo! And then back there, how did, how did it feel to see the Oldsmobile again? Yes. The piece of shit that I'm always trying to personally destroy? <laughs> Just a quick note. That car has been in every movie that Sam Raimi's ever made. 
including Quick and the Dead. That's a Western. <laughs> Where was it in Quick and the Dead? He had it stripped down to its chassis and he built a wagon on top of it. <laughs> what I want to know is what happened in that car? Something wonderful must have happened in that car. Because yeah. that's in every goddamn movie. <laughs> Dark Man, Dark Man's hanging from a helicopter. Yeah. He hits that car. <laughs> it's in a simple plan. It's in Oz the Great and Powerful. Oh. Yeah. Try and find it. <laughs> It's in there, so I'm glad we put that piece of crap in there for sentimental value. So, Bruce, when you're watching this film, is there any, God, I, I wish it was me up there somewhere. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, in your dreams, Jack. Yeah, yeah, I wish I could be buried alive like Jane. <laughs> Man, I miss those days. <laughs> for the rest of our cast here, what was your memory that you take away from the experience of making this movie? Jessica. Oh, God. <laughs> Being covered in vomit and yeah. blood. And yeah, that was definitely the thing that was most memorable to me. It was a hard shoot, but it was so much fun. And these people, they're amazing. I think Jane doing the blood kiss in the, in the attic. <laughs> That was a day, yeah. <laughs> we had to have like a safety procedure where, I mean, I was like pouring so much blood into her mouth that it came out of her nose and she had to like, you know, squeeze me so that when I knew she, she was suffocating and drowning in the blood and I would pull away. <laughs> That's just beautiful. <laughs> Shiloh, your, your favorite day? I, I think it was probably meeting you and you telling me that I should be prepared. No, no, no. And thinking that I was prepared. And then ultimately suffering through the whole movie and being very, very, you know, I had a really hard time. But trusting that Fede was going to make a great film. And this is the first time I've seen it. And I give two thumbs up. <laughs> uh, yeah. My favorite day. Jesus. When I had to take that needle out of my eye, it was, it was just a trick. It was really, really simple, but it was so difficult. It was just so hard. And I remember Fede is right next to me and his head is right there. And I'm, I'm just trying to get it right so I slip the thing out of, my, out of my finger so that it looks like it's coming out of my eye, but I have to pinch it so that my eye is still holding onto that skin for a while. It's super glued to my eye. And uh, I just remember silently sitting there waiting and trying to go through it in my head like every little minute detail and finally getting it right one time and it was perfect and <laughs> disgusting <laughs> so Yo, right over here Thank you for blowing our fucking minds. That was amazing. 
Oh, you shut up already? No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what? Pass it along. What, uh, what inspired this? How did this, this come to be? And as a quick follow-up, will we see an Evil Dead the Musical in the theater? <laughs> You've seen it already. I'm not going to be in it. Uh, no Evil Dead the Musical. I don't think we ever made a penny. I don't think we made a penny off that. Some, some young guys in Toronto said they wanted to do a musical and we thought it was a good idea and then they, anyways, it was a long story, but um, it didn't work out for them or for us and um, it was kind of fun though. And um, I have to say, if you get a chance to see that musical, has anyone seen it? The first three rows of the splatter zone, it's awesome. They're all, the, the, all the seats are covered in plastic because you will get hit with blood. That's the coolest thing about it. If you see the Evil Dead, Musical done really well with talented actors. It's a lot of fun. And if you see the musical done very poorly, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you can't really lose either way. I recommend it, movie or not. All right, right there. James, what what was it about the script that first grabbed you that made it uh, made a role that you really wanted to dive into and invest as much as you did? Um. It's a pretty awesome character. I get to do, I get to play basically three different characters. And uh, I mean, I thought the script was totally bananas and ridiculous in a good way. And I thought that that was gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and also being able to be like a woman in a horror film and be <coughs> the villain and to be scary, that was a challenge and that was like a really exciting thing to explore. In the back, back there, what were some of the elements we knew we had to include? Uh, I think that, uh, I don't know, like, like, the reality is that we, when we started, it was basically, we, we, you knew that, we knew that we had, we had to be brave enough to, you know, challenge any idea, that didn't matter how classic it was, we had to, you know, see if they were still relevant. Um, so there was a lot of ideas, so even, even though they're iconic and they're the original, we knew that if they weren't here and you will enjoy the movie, you wouldn't mind. So uh, that was kind of the, the spirit. So at the end of the day, I think we kept the ones that we liked the most. And like I always tell, like when Sam asked me to do it, I the first thing we started pitching was the memory of the film that I that I've seen when I was a kid. And also by the time he uh, he told me about it, it probably uh, I saw it like six years, seven years ago. In the moment I talked with Sam about it, it's not the film that I was. That I've seen the day before. So basically, it was all the ideas that were in the film that, that ended up being in the film were the ideas that stayed with me for 10, 20 years, right? So, the, which at the end of the day, I think they're the best idea in the movie. One of those ideas stayed with you for such a long time. I think that they were the ideas that deserve to be in the movie, which, you know, are basically the ones you saw today and they're original. I think that those are my favorites. And the car had to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the car. And the road. In the red shirt up top. Where are you? Yes, yes. And you wanted a cameo, right? You got your cameo. Nobody <laughs> wants a cameo. Here's your fucking cameo. <laughs> I'm sorry, I digress. What was the question? <laughs> well, I returned in the sequel. Yes. With an, even a bigger role than that. <laughs> It'll be about, probably about that size. I wasn't in this one for a really good reason. And I probably won't be in the others for a really good reason. It's time to start a whole new deal. We wanted these to be completely separate. I hope one day you can go to a movie theater and watch the first three and then the second three and enjoy them all. And people are so concerned, like we're burning the negative of the first original Evil Dead. It'll still be there on your shelf. Just dust it off and watch it anytime you want. They're all there, they're all available. This is new, it's new. It's time for some new shit out there. New actors, new good-looking young thespians, for God's sake. We couldn't act our way out of a wet paper bag in the first Evil Dead. <laughs> These people have, it's called abilities and talent. <laughs> yes. For the actors, how long did it take to get into makeup every day? Well, explain, Charlie, explain to you who you acted with. Oh, a tennis ball on a stick. Because 
Ultimately, I would get there in the morning, and I had very little makeup, and then they would be getting their demon makeup on, and I would go to set, and Fede and I would act together. You know, pretending to be, he would be a demon, and I would be a normal person, and then they would get there and do their close-ups, and then at the end of the day, they'd get their makeup off as I was continuing to act with a tennis ball. Um, so it took a really long time, I think, but, but I'm not going to answer that. Three or four hours <laughs> sitting with prosthetics on you. But I mean, thank God it was all real, because look how disgusting it was. Yeah. yeah. CGI just doesn't do that. You up there. Yeah, with the secondary question I want to ask you about New Zealand, and you're talking about doing another film. It's a follow up question, yeah. those are my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> have a go, but um, how far along are you in the production? And I don't want to miss the next one, just going back down there. Uh, you know what? Leave your name, address, and phone number, and we'll sure take care of that right away. <laughs> All right. You got it, babe. You got it. Over here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just evil dead. Just evil dead. Right here. Uh, this is for Lou. Uh, how does it feel to know you're the guy who killed the rest of the cats? <laughs> That was really hard for me, going through this movie, knowing that I did it. I talked to Fede about it, it was sad, but... You have guilt? I had to kill everybody, apparently. I had to read from Natorum to You had to be that guy. Yeah, the one I who had reads the guy. book made of skin. Yes. Oh, gosh, so horrible. Up there. Should I talk about it? You should talk about it. Go for it. Go for it. Well, I, you know, Bruce, I really, wait. yeah, it's true. Where is, where is Rogan? Rogan Banyas are the composer of the film. He's right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. It was, uh, I mean, we, we wanted the movie to sound different in general. I think there's a lot of awesome things when I, you know, this is the first time I see it in a big theater with so many, so many people. and. I think there was a lot of things, sound design that I love, and this is on the, on the everyday work of the sound design. It's, it's basically Bruce Campbell is the first one, you know, on the on the ground, and the, the last one to leave. He was there all the time, and, and I, I give him like 80 percent of all the ideas on the sound design. And we were from basically Fetty's full of shit. We were basically just trying to keep up with him. We would uh, present things to him, and he'd go, "No, I like the sound of." Uh, card in the spokes of a wheel for here. <laughs> all right, let's let's do it. And by when we finally put it all together, it made a lot of sense. So we just, we mostly tried to follow his obtuse lead. And um, and when we did, it made, it just made sense. And Roque, thank you for turning in an opera. This movie's an opera with dialogue and the occasional sound effect. But, uh, you know, when you turn in a score so full and rich like that, you just, we, we were in competition with you on the sound side, we're like, fuck that son of a bitch, look what he did for that scene. <laughs> so then we'd have to try and come up with something that was dynamic enough to be able to get through the music. So, thanks for nothing. <laughs> no, no, thanks for the com friendly competition. You know, and the beautiful thing is we, you know, the first Evil Dead is in mono. There's no left channel, right channel. It's just one channel, and that's it. It's just nice now to be able, if Fenny wants to hear a sound of a trap door coming from that corner or that corner or move from there to here, you know, you can do it now. So we're, it's just nice, you know, 34 years later to be able to work on, like, a modern movie. <laughs> You bring a lot of the, the, we had something that we called the nostalgia sounds, and we, I don't, I don't know if you have spotted, but you can hear a lot of voices in the air, you know, from the original movie, you can hear um, sound design from it, those flies, the movie opened with the sound of a fly, just like the original Evil Dead, so there's a lot of signature sounds from the original that we want to bring, so when you watch it again, you will notice there's a lot of voices and things. And actually, Bruce's voice is there. Yeah, he will jump into that sound booth and do screams and all that. The abomination at the end, that's Bruce, a lot of those screams. And Bruce will give me a lot of 
crazy script that will mix them together and the abomination at the end has a lot of Bruce's voice and all over the movie. And then Freddy will take that out and put a card in the spokes of a wheel. <laughs> Rob, gallons of blood? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I know that it was a truck outside, it was like 50,000 gallons. And we, yeah, and we had that truck, you know, like for a long, you know, we shot that final, the final scene was like five days of shooting, kind of, so the whole blood running scene. Yeah. What, well, yeah, five days out, out in the woods. Then we were inside, on set for other parts, for the, for the machete through the, you know, well, you know, everything that is the, the workshop. But uh, outside, we, we had that truck, and it was, you know, I know that we had two of those because I was always worried we were running out of blood. And like, we're running, well, how are we doing with the blood? How are we doing? We're doing good. Okay, we can still shoot in. Great. And the blood was going down, down, down. And then, yeah, I knew that if I ran out of blood, the day was over, right? So, so I was always looking at that, and I know that then suddenly I got a refill. Boom! And I was like, yeah, we have more blood. But it was, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. I was, uh, I would kind of love to see a. Uh, uh, that truck hitting another truck in the freeway in slow motion. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Never had that before. Okay, Fetty, so you get the job. Like, you're the director of the Evil Dead. What was going through your mind? Like, what was, I mean, was there, were you just eager to have a go at it and just kick its ass? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was I was scared at the beginning, honestly. I know, when when Sam told me like, would you like to do this? I was like, yes, of course. But then I was, you know, like thinking how how you know, what's the 2013 version of Evil Dead? It's a tricky question when you just sit down on a white blank page. Because part of what makes the original awesome is is that it's flawed. That it's not a perfect film, right? It has so many craziness and, and what you were saying about the hose and all the things you see, I think what that's made, what makes people love the movie. So I thought, like, how are we going to, we cannot make it and improve it, that would be horrible. So it, that was, it was very scary, the first part, like the first day, thinking about how to approach the story and, and why it would be relevant. But then when we can't find a new story and we thought it, that we knew because it was evil that it could go anywhere. There was no place where the movie will go that you, you could think, ah, oh, that was a little bit too much. Yeah, there wasn't. The, the actual on set, remember, the, every time somebody asked, like, is this too much blood? Is this too much whatever? I very well was like, there's never, it's never too much. They knew I was going to tell them that. Whatever they asked me, anybody from the crew about it, it was too much makeup, too much blood, too much thing. It was always never too much. And then the story was kind of the same. So I think we, we got excited when we realized we were in that universe. But I was like, wait a minute, this is evil that, like, you know, there's a moment back to the future where he goes like, wait a minute, I have the time machine, and I have all the time I want. It was kind of that moment where I felt like, oh, this is an evil that we can, it can rain bloody, anything can happen. And that was the, the most exciting part that really got us going. Uh, two more questions from the audience. Right here. <laughs> Rob, your thoughts? I was wrong. You wanted a, a ton of CG? Yes. I didn't want a ton of CG. There's just some things that are easier with CG, and we did them old school, and we took the time to do them old school, and uh, it was the long. It was hard to always justify why are we shooting for so long, but um, it was old school bit, uh, effects, and um, and so there were times that I would think, oh, we could do that really quickly with CG. Not a makeup or any of that, but um, it, it, Fetty fought for the right things, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. Do you do craft service or uh, specialty? Fabulous. Uh, what point like, in the writing process did you have the idea for it, and 
For, for which part? So the very, very beginning before the credits, like where did that, where did that come from? So it takes a the opening with the father and the daughter? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh what was that? Um, I think we knew that we had a, uh, yeah, no, we, we knew that we needed a, a start, you know, a kick start, because we knew it was going to be a slow burn into the horror. So we knew we had to start with something and, and, and we show the audience that this is going to be brutal and, and, and it's going to be scary. So we, we want to tell somebody else's story. We didn't want to involve the main characters, so we came up with, okay, this, this other story, the book has been around there. Somebody found it, like they, they played with it and, and bad things happened and, and it came to this moment you saw, right? The, the, they find a the daughter, they bring it back. And I, originally, I remember that I, I kind of wrote a, a version of it where she was there and there was some mean guys torturing her and, uh, and Roto told me, uh, he was reading, they were like, no, fact, no, 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 this is wrong. Like when, when they take the hood out, her father has to be in front of her. Like that's what you know, make you go like, what? <laughs> and, and, and that was Roto's idea. And, and from that twist that we knew they were was going to put everyone. Roto, where are you? But what is, where is Roto? That's, Roto. He, that's Michael Ryder, my friend there. Where are you? Where are you? He's backstage. He went away. He went away. <laughs> Anyway, that was uh, Rose's idea. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's it. Well, I think I speak for everyone in here. All the punishment that y'all took, all the punishment you took all those years ago, and you. <laughs> Fucking thank you so much. Betty, I can't wait to see a hundred films by you. Thank you. Thank Let's you, give Betty. it up for the cast. Thanks for watching, and if you like what you see, click subscribe to get more videos from the channel for low-budget YouTube filmmakers.